200 years, there have been repeated attempts to refute and discredit the teachings of Marx. Most often, this is done using delusions, inventions, and forgeries. In this video, we will explore five of the hottest myths about Marxism. One of the most common accusations against Marxism is its comparison with religion. However, such an assessment does not correspond to reality at all. Religion is an idealistic worldview, the main feature of which is a belief in supernatural beings, gods, soul, parallel worlds, and so on. Religion is characterized by accepted dogmas, that is, provisions, which cannot be doubted or changed. In contrast to religion, Marxist theory does not require blind faith. On the contrary, it requires knowledge and an understanding of the world. Marxism is based on a scientific analysis of existing reality, materialism, and sees the causes of social development in the material conditions of society's life and not in supernatural providence. The teachings of Marx are often accused of utopianism, of being disconnected from reality, and inventing an ideal society. But such statements have nothing to do with Marxist theory. First, most of the Marxist works are devoted to the study of the past and comprehensive analysis of modern society, its political, cultural, and economic processes. It is from the study and identification of the laws of development of modern capitalism that Marx comes to the conclusion that capitalism is not eternal and after it there must be a new system, communism. Secondly, the requirement of social ownership of the means of production follows from the social nature of labor which already exists under capitalism when hundreds and thousands of people are united in one centralized enterprise. The abundance that Marxism speaks of is quite possible with the modern development of productive forces. At the same time, communism is not at all an ideal society. This is just another social system, the next stage in the development of society, which will have its own problems and contradictions. Thirdly, the victory of the Great October Socialist Revolution and the construction of the world's first socialist state marked the triumph of scientific communism and proved its correctness in practice, despite the fact that the USSR was able to build only the first phase of communist society, its achievements were able to influence the entire course of human history. Before Marx and Engels, communism really seemed to be a utopia, but thanks to the universal laws of development discovered by them, the laws of the historical process, and the analysis of the nature of the capitalist system, communism took a scientific basis. With the help of Marxist theory, communism ceased to be a product of a dreamy mind, but became a scientific forecast of the future derived from the study of reality. An equally widespread myth is the assertion about the artificial division of people into classes which Marx himself invented. Even the French bourgeois historians Augustin Thierry and Francois Guizot wrote about the struggle of classes opposite in their interests. But it was Marx who finalized their theories and explained the origin of classes, revealing their objective interests. And now, as to myself, no credit is due to me for discovering the existence of classes in modern society or the struggle between them. Long before me, bourgeois historians had described the historical development of this class struggle. and bourgeois economists, the economic economy of the classes, what I did that was new was to prove 1. That the existence of classes is only bound up with particular historical phases in the development of production. 2. That the class struggle necessarily leads to the dictatorship of the proletariat. 3. That this dictatorship itself only constitutes the transition to the abolition of all classes and to a classless society. Nationalists claim that Marxism is against nations and wants to deprive them of their cultural identity. To begin with, it should be said that Marxism comprehensively studies the essence of nations, their origins, and perspectives. In the course of this study, the communists come to the conclusion that inter-ethnic conflicts are generated by capitalism and will be eliminated only together with the capitalist system itself. 
An integral part of Marxist theory is the principle of proletarian internationalism, that is, a call for the solidarity of the workers of all countries in the struggle against international capital. In contrast to bourgeois nationalism, Marxism presupposes an equal alliance of peoples against any national oppression and takes into account the particularities of the development of each nation. An example of the implementation of the Marxist principles of internationalism was the national policy of the USSR in which hundreds of nationalities peacefully coexisted and their identity and culture were supported at the state level. Back in the 1920s, the Soviet government pursued a policy of indigenization, i.e. support for cultural and national characteristics in order to protect and preserve them. The majority in any nation are workers, and therefore, truly national interests are the interests of the working people. A real development of culture is possible in a nation in which most of its representatives are kept in poverty and ignorance. Only after the liberation of the working people from the oppression of capital is all-around national development possible. Critics often reproach Marxism with obsolescence, declaring that in our time, a socialist revolution is impossible due to the absence of the proletariat. At the same time, the proletariat as a rule, means only workers of simple physical labor. This position is another misconception. First, modern society is still capitalist, based on the relationship between wage labor and capital, as studied by Marxist political economy. The automation and external changes, the exploitation of man by man still persists, acquiring a more hidden and disguised character. Part of the product created by the worker is still taken away in favor of the capitalist, creating the basis for profit. Secondly, the proletarian is not only a person at a machine or with a sledgehammer in their hands. Despite the differences in the nature of labor, the modern worker, like the worker of the past, does not own the means of production, is a hired worker, and is exploited by the capitalist, which means that the class essence of the proletariat has not gone anywhere. Workers continue to be the main driving force of history. The constant stream of criticism, accusations of irrelevance, and myth-making against Marxism are due only to one thing, the hatred of the capitalists for the teachings of Marx, since it poses the biggest threat to them. It was Marxist theory that declared a consistent war on capitalism, showed the way to victory over it, and led to the creation of the first workers' state. Marxism could not lose its relevance, since it most accurately studies and analyzes the foundations of modern society. Some provisions that may become obsolete are replaced in the course of scientific research with new descriptions, provisions, and concepts, which makes Marxism a constantly developing revolutionary teaching of the working class. Stay tuned.